Now, one of the things that I'd like to get out of the way before we go too deep into this is understanding that human beings are actually evolutionarily adapted to long duration fasts. So think back to hunter gatherer times when humans didn't have access to three meals a day plus snacks. Our human ancestors were actually not hunter gatherers, they were gatherer hunters. And we know this because they spent the majority of their time gathering and a minority of their time hunting other animals. In order to survive for long periods of time with limited food availability, which was quite common, our human ancestors had to fast for extended periods of time, sometimes upwards of 10 days in a row. And we see this in the scientific research. There are studies that demonstrate that when you induce as little as a 10-day fast in humans, you induce a number of significant metabolic improvements. The first study to talk about this is a study titled Influence of a 10-Day Mimic of Our Ancient Lifestyle on Anthropometrics and Parameters of Metabolism and Inflammation. What this study did was put individuals onto a 10-day mimic of a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to determine what would happen to them if they mimicked the behavior of our hunter-gatherer ancestors. In order to do this, they had individuals walk 14 kilometers per day on average because that's about how much hunter-gatherers used to walk. They also had them carry an eight kilogram backpack, which is approximately 18 pounds, and that can actually add up very quickly. They then provided them with raw food because hunter-gatherers generally did not cook their food, and they provided them with fresh water. These individuals also slept outside in sleeping bags, and they were exposed to temperatures as low as 12 degrees and as high as 42 degrees Celsius. What this research study found was that there were three features of the metabolic syndrome that significantly improved when living a hunter-gatherer lifestyle for 10 days. And those three features include number one, body mass, number two, improved glucose homeostasis, and number three, circulating lipids. So this is a short-term study to deep dive into what it would look like if you as an individual switched over to a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, which truth be told is almost akin to backpacking. If you just put on a backpack and went into the woods and hung out for five to 10 days at a time, your health would likely significantly improve because your energy expenditure would be quite high. Your energy intake would be quite low. You would induce a negative calorie deficit. And as a result of that, a number of metabolic markers will improve. Now we're going to go into understanding the details about what a calorie deficit is in a little bit, but I want you to understand that this pattern of fasting and feasting, which is cycling between periods of both high energy intake and low calorie intake, creates a collection of biochemical adaptations that naturally selected for individuals who could survive that amidst an uncertain food supply. So this is natural selection at play. The environment places specific restrictions on you and you as an individual have to adapt to that environmental condition. If you can adapt, then you can reproduce. You are likely to pass on those genes to your offspring. Now, scientists believe that over the course of time, these metabolic adaptations that allowed for regular intermittent fasting became so ingrained into the human species that it's present in our genetic material in modern humans. And for this reason, modern day humans are not only capable of fasting for extended periods of time, they actually derive substantial metabolic benefit when they do. So my point here is that if you didn't just have breakfast, but you still had to hunt as an example to get some food, okay? If you had to survive in general, and if you had to endure long periods of time with no food, your body would activate an internal recycling program that would actually optimize the function of your liver and your muscle and your brain and your cardiovascular system. And this internal recycling program is known as autophagy. Autophagy is a name of a biochemical mechanism that is a conserved mechanism that evolved with human beings that is largely responsible for recycling old and damaged proteins inside of cells, old and damaged lipids, and old and damaged carbohydrates. 
And when this process occurs, the cellular environment tends to become less inflammatory and uh, higher functioning over the course of time. So you can think of autophagy as basically a way that tissues can oxidize fatty acids that have been stored for long periods of time and to oxidize stored carbohydrates that have been stored for long periods of time that are present inside of your muscle and liver. And by getting rid of those two fuel tanks and by as well recycling old and dysfunctional proteins, the cellular environment tends to become more optimal, which then induces a number of metabolic adaptations that are positive adaptations inside of each tissue, which then confers improved overall metabolic health. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full length episode. Now the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's gonna show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.